Welcome back to the channel. We're on another EV charge point installation. This one's a little bit different and I'll talk through it as the video moves along. Just if we are actually out in a garage, so this is a detached garage, it's got an office space above. We've got this consumer unit here already. We're going to have to replace it because it's very full and I'll show you that when we get to it. Just to zoom around to outside, Matthew's already got the hypervolt on the wall and we're using the hypervolt cable on this one. So if you remember on the last video we did, it's a little bit different to the CEF variant. So the, the cat cable isn't individually screened on all the cores, it's just screened as a whole. And then the actual um, power cable isn't fine stranded, so it's seven strand. And obviously you don't need to ferrule that, so that's gone straight in. Um, Matthew said it's a little bit more difficult to strip and work with than the CEF one, but it does seem to have a tougher outer sheath, which is nice. So if I show you it over here, you can see it's branded up as Hypervolt. Um, find a bit with the writing on, so it's got their logo on. Um, when they sell it, you're only supposed to use it with their charge point. And that's because it is at a discounted price. Um, so obviously we will respect that as installers. I think that's that's good if they're providing a discount on the materials that we do kind of give the benefit of that on their installs. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. I know that people might approach that differently. We've got Alan here, so you can see Matthew's all loaded out um the cable you'll notice here if i zoom out a little bit there's this central pillar on the the wall that we've mounted the charge point on so we've had to do some um artisan style angle drilling to get our cable through and um yeah we've kind of gone off down on an angle like that and again if you drill downwards when you're installing your hypervolts you can get the bend underneath to an absolute minimum so when the front's on you don't see that and it looks like a rear entry. Um, we still need to just clean up a little bit here as the cables come through the wall, but we've got a nice bend on that. Um, and again, using the Linean clips, if I can find one, because they're hard to spot, there's one up towards the top just there. So they make a nice, neat job of dressing the cable away. I'll get you a shot from behind here with the garage door drop down. But yeah, we're going to with it, and um, we're changing the consumer unit in the garage, which is just behind me here. Um, Reason for that is a lack of space. We do only have a six mil coming out here and there is um, equipment in the garage that's already kind of in use um, in the past, but it's not been used at present. So we've got um, a little office up there with a socket ring final circuit. We've got some heaters as well that plug in, obviously the lighting. Um, and yeah, we need to be mindful of that with connecting the EV charge point into what we're doing. Um, we are going to install a dedicated cable for this charge point um, in the new year most likely. This is just a case where a customer's got an electric vehicle, they need to get it on charge using this little plug-in lead that comes with it. And they just weren't happy faffing around with that and having it into a socket front, having read up on the internet how that can damage the sockets over time. So they just wanted a charge point they can use for the minute. We can use the load monitoring to make sure there's no issue, um, you know, taking out the, the sub main circuit out to here. Um, so that's not going to be a factor and then obviously when we come to drop our cable in from the consumer unit in the main house Which is about I'd say a 30 40 meter run You know we can um, Easily do that with the way we're going to set it up. That's going to be a, a nice simple addition at some stage So we'll move on with the install now. I'll show you the consumer unit being done We can talk a little bit about that and the CT clamps and how that's all going to pull together Inside the, the charge point Matthew's just cleaning up the cable. We've got the little CT lead wired in and that's all through the hypervolt cable so we can um, install that at this end and the upfront protective device on this is a 40 amp um, circuit breaker so we can um, obviously set the hypervolt to make sure it never consumes more power than that um, obviously you do have the issue of the install as a whole at present where the main service fuse could potentially be um, at risk if it is going to pull the full um, load for a prolonged period and there's excessive use of electricity down at the house but we're going to talk about how we're going to tackle that as well just in the interim while we get our cable out here for the future. Okay so this is inside the consumer unit as you'll see it's a little bit full in there which is why we didn't really want to go adding anything else in. We've also got a bit of a mix of the breakers so we're just going to change it, stick a new board in, redress all of this. We've got a couple of steel wire armors, one's the feed in and one is going to a little outside socket so we've got those two re-terminate into the board. We're going to use a Luden one and um, stick our CBOs in. So I'll show you us doing that in a moment. We're going to pop a little time lapse on maybe or I'll just film Matthew doing it and annoy him. Um, yeah, we'll get on, get on with that for the time being and then I'll show you the hypervolt 
and how we've set that to try and avoid any issues with the main service fuse in the interim while we're going to get a circuit down here. Okay, so you'll notice inside the hypervolt there's a little dial in there, if you can see that. Um, if you go on the, the technical support area of their website, it will show you how to adjust that to limit what this will actually draw. And in our case, we've got a sub main out to here, it's actually a 32 amp circuit. So we're going to set it down at 16 just for the time being. Um, the customer has a, a hybrid vehicle, so it's only got a 30 mile range on the actual vehicle itself. They're not in a hurry to have it recharged quickly while they're at home. It will generally be plugged in overnight. Um, so just while we find the, the time in our schedule to come down and drop the actual circuit down here for a full on EV charger with its maximum rating and obviously with a CT clamp down onto the main um, service head. You know, this is a good solution just for now and it avoids using those silly little leads you get with the vehicles. We could have gone for the 32 and obviously it wouldn't have allowed it to draw any more than that. But the concern is with the rest of the, the consumption in the property that you could have an issue. So we've come to the decision in the time being just to knock that down ever so slightly. And um, yeah, Matthew's just going to strip this board out now. We've locked off inside, so inside the main house. Let's quickly spin you around and show you that. It's um, quite a distance away. Um, we've got a low impedance value through the supply cable coming out here. So we know they've gone direct underground in du in a duct into where the main intake position is uh, obviously when we come to do it we're going to have to take a route around these soft borders fortunately there is one if you notice all the way around the edge of the property there's um, little soft digs that we can do so there is a route for us to dig a cable in it's a bit of a long one we'll probably end up i don't know 40 meters i would guess um main intake position is just inside this wall here so yeah, we've got that to worry about later on. But for now, we're going to strip this board out and then we'll have a little watch of Matthew installing a consumer unit and see if he's any good at it. Jump back in a sec. So that's us all stripped out. You'll see we've got the twin and air all folded back up there out the way. We've got the trunk in, cut to the right depth for the new consumer unit. Um, we've taken these steel wire armors off. We're going to drop our new board down a little bit because it's bigger than the last one. So we've got a bit more cable to play with on these steel wire armors. So these will need remaking off. We're going to use some of the piranha nuts instead of banjos and I'm going to get on with that now, we'll get this Luden board on the wall and um, then we'll jump on and show you us doing the last bit of dressing away. So I thought I'd show you where we're, where we're at, we've got the vinyl circuits all wired in now, so we've got our 6mm feed down here as I spoke about before, um, we have got the banjos on, not the banjos, the piranha nuts on these and obviously fly leaded up to the top, you must make sure you tighten up the allen key as well um, on those um, piranha nuts so they're a bit down onto the thread. Um, we've got a socket ring final circuit down here as I said it's on a B32 MCB in the house. We've still got testing to do on all these circuits so ignore the bits of air copper on sure they're going to get terminated correctly in a short while. Um, these are just loosely dressed away for now and speaking about the EV like I told you we could have gone for the full rating down here because this garage is not really used at all. There is a space above it um, with um, I think they've got a little office up there and such, but no one ever uses it. It's all just left as is. Um, so he was quite happy to just make use of this cable for the EV charge point. But once I explained, you know, if that ever was to change in the future, it's not really going to be sufficient. And we might as well make a proper job of it in the long term, which we are going to do. Um, but for now, we've got our cat cable so we can get the load monitoring set up. As I said, we're going to drop this onto 16 amp setting. For the time being, we're just going to swing it over here onto a 16 amp RCBO. Um, we do have the 40 amp RCBO in the bar there ready for when we have bought the new cable down and then we can um, set it to its maximum value and obviously we can then get a CT clamp over onto the main supply head so we're not putting that in any danger because that's the concern at the minute. If I just jump around this way we have got a few little bits and pieces we've been used to show you those. This is um, a bit of kit I've ordered off the, the internet and it's a gland pack kit. I'll drop a little link to the actual um, place I got it. I bought these through Amazon, but they do have their own website. Um, so it's the G-Pro kits, and I will reference that in the description to this video. So you can go off and have a look at those if you want. We're actually quite impressed with the glands themselves. You get a couple of these tailor ones, and the benefits of those is they are um, fire retardant, and they also fit in a 32 mil knockout, which is brilliant because we often find ourselves using reducers or having to drill extra holes into consumer units and nobody likes doing that so that's a good solution 
Um, you can also get the enlargers if you do want to still pop them in a 40mm hole, they offer that as well. Uh, the glands themselves seem pretty decent and they chuck in some of these whisker fire retardant pushing glands too, so nice little kit. I also got these little um, push fit connectors as well, I'm yet to use these so I can't really comment on, on the quality of these but I'm going to give them a go, see what they're like. A uh, new product to market so I thought I'd um, try them out and again I'll be showing them in some of the videos coming up. And my um, other little treat for myself is this Bosch set here. I like these where the, the bits are colour coded so you've got your, your PH2, your Posi2, straight drive bit, torque bits and then some of these as well. These always come in handy for attaching your driver bits into. So I thought I'd just show you them while I was on with the video and uh, I'll drop links to that lot in the description of the video not paid off sponsored as always it's just me finding some bits and pieces i think are decent and um, sharing with you guys i'll get this all packed away now and, and turned on and working and the hypervolt tested and then i'll show you the cable route reviews how we've dressed the cable and the whole thing together finished at the end if you've got any questions drop them in the description i realize this isn't a standard one but i wanted to kind of show that you can still install ev charge points where you are limited to the supply cable going to an external garage you just need to make sure you set up the protective devices so you're not putting anything at any risk of causing an issue and that you can also use load limiting with the charge points themselves um, and that leads into bigger questions about the distribution network and their requirements on us to notify them of our installs i mean obviously their primary concern is the load on the network as a whole rather than the individual service fuse fuses i mean that's still a factor but generally they are concerned about the maximum load they're seeing in a street for example that's why you still have to notify um, but we'll talk about that later on let's go and we're putting all this back together and i'll show you the finished result right so this is the board on the wall you'll see we've got the little sticker we always fit on there so that just gives you a barcode we can scan for our crm software and also the date it was installed we drop one on the side as well so we'll know if anybody's opened this distribution board um, without us being present so we've got the trunking all in we've got this cable we're just going to drop another um, linear clip on this final drop here we've missed that one off um, and yeah, that's that in. See the steel wire armour, we've got rid of the clips that were on this. I never like clips on um, steel wire armour cables, so we've got the cleats on there now. That's that bit done. If I jump out and show you the charge point, you see we've got the power on. We've got these nice black screws um, that Matthews had the idea of to pop them on there. It makes a nice, neater job of it. Um, yeah, we're just going to run through now with the customer how this works. Get the app installed on there. Smart device of choice and make sure it charges the vehicle and tests out correctly. You know as a final functional test obviously we've been through the test with our test set but you never know it's always worth checking with an actual vehicle if you have one to hand so we're going to do that um, we'll have a little chat about some of the stuff that we've done on this install as well and then close this one up so we'll just have a tidy up now and um, go through the final process with the customer and then i'll jump back on the video in a second as promised there's the linear super clips on the cable and we've dropped another one in on the top up there as well just thought I'd show you we have actually done that, nice and neat, um, no ugly cleats, not that this one's particularly in sight, but there you go, neat job. So the audio might not be very good on this because we're in the van heading back to our little unit to get a few more materials for this afternoon's job. Um, yeah, it was a nice simple one with the old Hyper Ball. They're, they're a dream to install to be fair, there's nothing complicated about them, it is just a radial circuit with an electric vehicle charge point on the end. Obviously with this one a little bit more complex because of the fact we um, are limiting the load that's currently available and we just had a discussion with a customer about this cable that's going out to the garage um, at some stage in the future. It's just a case of when we can kind of get that scheduled in. We're so busy, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. But at least now they can keep their vehicle topped up. It's, uh, it's a nice BMW, 30 kilometer range. So it's not full electric or anything and that'll keep them going just fine. Um, what did you make of the Hypervolt cable, Matthew? It was nice. It was difficult to strip. The combination of the cold and it being tougher than the CEF cable. Yeah, so uh, you'll have seen in our last video we did with Steve, we tried the CEF Procell EV cable and there are some differences with the Hypervolt one. Um, so obviously the Procell one has the inner cores of the cat cable screen which we think is a nice touch um, but the outer sheathing on this hypervolt is really strong which is good um, you know it is a little bit more difficult to strip for us as electricians but it is it does feel more robust um, but when you're sticking it in outside locations especially you know you want to know that it's not going to get 
split open or, or damaged by someone pushing the bins past it or something. Um, not that that was a factor on this install, but it is a really strong quality outer sheath. Um, it goes really nice with the Linean Super clips. I think they're the 15 to 18 mil ones off the top of my head. Um, we also tried those um, G Pro Bland packs. So we used one of those in the top of the Luden board. It's pretty decent as well, weren't it, Matthew? Yeah, it tightened up nicely. Yeah, so you can feel the difference compared to like the ones we used. Yeah, so Matthew's talking very quietly. It's like he didn't want you to hear him. But he did say it um, tightens down nicely on the cable if you didn't catch that. And they do, they kind of click in. It's weird. With a whisker lance, so you just kind of tighten them up and, you know, when you feel it unable to tighten any further, you know it's done. But this one kind of clicks. It's hard to explain, so we'll get it on a video at some so point soon. It felt like it was ratcheting. Yes, so, like, that's a good description, like a ratchet. Um, we're tightening it up, so we'll show it on a video anyway at some point in the future. Didn't use the um, push fit connectors, they look very much like the Wago ones, but you know, they seem okay from, from what they look like in the box. I was like trying new products, so we're going to give them a try and we'll show them in another video and explain the ratings that are applicable to them. I think the 400 volts, um, up to 400 volts off the top of my head and rated at 32 amps. We'd have to check, I don't want to say something that isn't true, so I'll check up on that and we'll see. And again, that Bosch driver pack is brilliant. I got that from Amazon in the sale um, over Black Friday, whenever that was. And I've really not had a chance to open it and use it um, since that time, but they're proper decent as well. And I'll drop a link into the description of the video. Otherwise, thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, it's just a basic little hypervolt install. Nothing that exciting on this video, but some more work of us out on site. Um, we'll catch up with you again on the next one, probably um, after Christmas, I would think. This might be the last video that drops by before Christmas. So have a good Christmas and New Year, and um, we'll see you all in the next video. Say bye, Matthew. Bye.